Hello everyone! So you may remember there's another video of mine where I take a look at this TPA3116 amplifier. What was cool about this is that it cost me five dollars. Here's the eBay listing for it. So as you can see, five dollars and four cents. It's a TPA3116 D2, which is the regular chip, and 50 watts. Well, these are more like 20, 20 watts. Uh, you can see some of my other videos where I talk about this uh, stereo amplifier board. And um, as you can see, there's something missing here, and that's the chip. And unfortunately, when it got shipped to me, the uh, chip broke off. Uh, the way this is uh, done is the heat sink is glued on the chip with no support on either side. So it must have got hit during transport from China and ripped the chip right off. Well, it was sort of half on, and I ripped it off the rest of the way. So I never got to test this. But um, as you can see here, this is a pretty standard listing here. Um, this one I ch is still available, three available, is from this A Warm Sunshine as the seller. Uh, it's pretty representative in the photograph there. Uh, free shipping, $5. Uh, there's just some more pictures. Uh, just the usual. Eh, nothing much about it. So. Um, I had emailed the seller right away and said, uh, hey, this is broken. I sent them a photograph and they actually uh, said, oh, I'm very sorry you know, in broken English and they sent me a new one. And the new one has come in. And here it is. So as you can see, heat sink is attached. You know, overall not bad. Now it does come with these little standoffs and the nuts and then a volume knob you can push on here. But one of the cheap things about this, and I guess the $5 price is, uh, you know, one of the cutbacks, is while there's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the front and also a three pin audio cable. So if you panel mount this with the, um, the volume knob sticking through a panel, uh, oh, by the way, it does come with uh, the nut and a washer here. Uh, this one, like, the, the knob is there, but this one, you can see it's on there. Um, so you can panel mount this and you can run cables from here to say RCA jacks on the back and then obviously uh, This is the speaker terminals and power L out and right R out for right and the left and N is neutral and P is positive I'm assuming so this is the way the outputs configured and then the ground and the VCC are right there on these um, headers here this does lend itself to putting inside of a cabinet and uh, you will just have to get a cable to connect to this. This looks like the standard, um, <clears throat> was it JST, I think it's called, or JWT. Most of the writing on this board is in Chinese. Of course, uh, the capacitors and these components here are labeled with English characters. But uh, there's some Chinese here, there, which probably talks about right and left out. And uh, this is the input here. And there's something under next to the volume knob. One small issue with the new board is that the original one here, the volume knob, quite clicky. New one. I mean, it has a detent. You can feel it like a on-off detent, so it's off now. But it doesn't really make a sound, and it feels pretty mushy. So that's a bit lame. So let's take a look at the operation of this board. I'm a big fan of the TPA3116 amplifier chip. It's a class D or digital chip. It just means it uses really high switching frequencies and it uses these passive components on the board to filter out those elements from the audio signal. But in the end, if you run these types of chips off of 24 volts, you get two by 30 watts into an eight ohm load at 24 volts. Um, you really do get some good clean power out of it. This is still pushing it. At 24 volts, you're probably more likely to get around uh, 20 watts of really clean audio before it starts to clip, you know, but you can go even louder and, and there's a little bit of distortion. 12 volts or 15 volts, it's a much lower output. And that's just the way audio amplifiers work. You need voltage to drive the speakers. So these chips are pretty good. Uh, these may be clone chips, so maybe the performance is not as good. As you can see, it supports up to 26 volts. Um, if we take a look at the capacitors on here, they're 35 volt ones, that's on that board, the broken one, and yep, this is also 35 volt ones. Of course the brand is this Chong brand, so unknown uh, quality, but I'm not too concerned really. So one of the things that is an issue with these is there is some gain settings, and these are set by 
uh, resistors on specific pins. And as, as you can see here, you get various channel gains. And on some of these, uh, it has been found that, that the gain resistor is set pretty high and it actually just increases noise, while background noise, when you're at the minimum volume. Um, and there's a little convenient chart right here to show you the gain. Master and slaves, if, if you're operating multiple of these units together, of course, there's only one chip here, so we're just dealing with the master here. But these are the resistor components here and uh, that result in these particular gains. Now, on some of my other videos with this amp, if you go check out the other videos, you'll see I altered the resistors on those, so the gain was the 20 dB. I, I didn't, I think they came both set for 26. It just was a bit too high, or maybe they were even 32. It made the volume not very sensitive, it just made a bit of noise. As you can see here in this picture here, pin 7 and 8 are the two relevant pins, because here are the two gain resistors. R2 is connected between 7 and 8, as you can see here, and R1 hangs off here to ground. And these are the two relevant resistors. And actually, it's kind of handy that I have this broken board here because now we can see exactly where these pins are going. So with the chip missing, you can see pin 1 here is the white dot, and I've marked pins 7 and 8 with these black dots. And then over here, I've marked the two resistors 2 and 1. So that's R2 is right there, that's the first one, and R1 is right there. So let's take a measure and see what those actually come out as, and then we can calculate the gain on this amplifier. 100K. So I'll just write on the data sheet here, R2, 100K. Okay, so I measured these resistance and this is what we got on this board. R2 is 100K and R1 is, is 20K. And it's easy to see here, if we look at R2, 100K, and we look at 20K, that the gain is 26 decibels. The performance of this sample is actually improved remarkably if you change it to 20. That's the best performing setting. In addition, cuts out some of the background hiss you just hear even when the volume is turned all the way down. And to fix this problem, all we need to do is flick off our C the R2 there, because as you see, to get to 20 dB gain, we just have to open R2, so we'll just remove it, and then we have to just solder onto R1, something like 5.6K or similar. In my other AMP projects, I didn't have a 5.6K resistor. I put something similar and it worked fine. All right, so what I had in stock was a 5.1K quarter watt resistor. Uh, which you can see here is 5.6 is what we were looking for, so it's close enough. I mean, eh, it's good enough. Not much room in there, so what I did is I sort of bent the leads of the quarter watt resistor around, like that, and... Obviously you can see that the R2 resistor is completely gone, because that needed to be opened, and then I soldered those onto the R1 pads. And uh, it's quite doable if you if you pre-bend the leads just like that and then, um, you know, add a little flux to the resistor, tin those ends, and then basically you just have to hold it on with tweezers and just touch those uh, surface mount pads and it will be soldered on pretty well. Let's see if this works. All right, so here's the meso wires that I had connected to my previous amp I was using on my bench. Uh, you can look on my channel for a review of this particular amp. This is also a TPA3112 amp. Very similar in design, as you can see, it's got the three pin input there, panel mount connector, um, that has a clicky switch. But this has a heat sink that is held on by screws, and it's a nice, nice beefy heat sink as well, so there'll be no heat problems no matter how high I'm driving it. 2.1mm uh, barrel uh, power input connector and then the two uh, outputs and um, this one also is Chinese but this one is nice in that it actually had a way to easily change the gain by just putting a blob and as you can see I'm actually running this one at 26 dB by just putting a blob there and this originally came as 32 this one was uh, if I recall about $20 or maybe yeah maybe 18 so for the price of one of these, you can get four of these. And from a component perspective, you can see they're very similar. We have the two input filtering caps. We have the same inductors. Oh, we have a different inductance though. These are marked 150. Uh, we have these capacitors, 684J100, 684J100. So those are the same. Obviously, there's a little bit of difference in the construction quality, but will I even be able to tell an audio quality difference? I've been using this amp for quite a while here, so I'm very familiar with how it sounds. Let's plug this in and give this a try.
Well, I just got back from doing some listening tests with this. Uh, I ran at relatively high volumes uh, for quite a while, and uh, the heat sink just got slightly warm. So you have to know that it into 8 ohms, a heat sink this size, it's pretty small, is actually fine. Maybe at max power, if you had uh, 26 volts going into this, and you had it just at full volume, this would probably start to get hot. But these chips have thermal shutdown, so if they get too hot, they protect themselves anyways. But in the 4 ohm load, there is no way you could use this heat sink. I mean, you, it would probably work fine at low volumes, but if you try to turn it up, it, the heat, the chip would just overheat and shut off. But with the gain fix, I'm pretty pleased with this. Um, one of the issues if the gain is set to too high is that the knob becomes very sensitive. Now, of course, it's you know it's a logarithmic volume knob. These are just the cheapy ones, but it's pretty it's pretty good actually. I mean, uh, with some good speakers hooked up here, and I'm running this on 20 volts or a little over 20 volts, you you have to turn this quite a bit to get loud. But it's still even with the minimum gain setting. This is a line in from my computer. This absolutely gets pretty darn loud. I have some Polk Audio speakers hooked up to it. Uh, the sound is good. I, I've used this amp for quite a while and this easily is as good sounding as this one. I, I really don't notice any difference. Uh, a and B on the same song sound the same on these particular speakers at least. So I was looking here at the application sheet just sort of comparing uh, this amplifier to this and yeah there it's such a simple design. I mean there are slight variances between this one and say this amplifier. But overall, uh, this is following the the same kind of. You have the input capacitance right here, which one microfarad that just matches right here what's happening. And then here for these speaker outputs, you have these uh, LC filters here, so that's what the inductance of the capacitance is for here. So it's uh, pretty much a good match. Um, this this uh, diode here is just input protection for this, so you get a little bit of voltage drop, but it's uh, quite minimal, so not a big deal there. But overall, this works great. If you're going to drive 8 ohm speakers and uh, you'd like a really good amp that's $5, absolutely buy this amp, especially because it includes the hardware for panel mounting or mounting inside a project. And uh, these are actually convenient for that. You just have to kind of hook some RCAs and things up to it yourself. Or if you're like me, you just run it right on your desk like this <laughs> using the metal standoffs. This works for me. The volume knob is not too bad. The only thing that's a bit weird with this particular design is the power is switched directly on this uh, potentiometer here. So it is switching uh, 20 volts or up to 26 volts here. So you know I don't know about the longevity of that. And as you can see, when you turn it off there, the LED just slowly fades. But that's what happens. Um, and it comes right back on. If you found any of this video helpful, um, give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. It helps a lot. You can subscribe for more videos and leave any questions in the comments. And thanks for watching. Bye.